Hello everyone and you're very welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over your bulking checklist. This checklist is, the purpose of this checklist is to make sure that you have everything you need and you're in the right place to be in before embarking on a bulk. Now what's the deal with this? I've done a bulk this year, I've seen great progress from it. My lifts have severely increased. So what am I trying to do? Just keep all the gains for myself? On the contrary, I want you to make all the gains you could possibly make. But I want you to do it right and I want you to be in the right place to do so. So this video isn't to tell you that you should or shouldn't bulk. Ultimately, that decision is up to you anyways. But maybe by the end of it, you might decide that bulking isn't the right thing to do for you at this moment in time. And there's other areas that need to be addressed first that I will cover in today's video. One of the reasons I'm doing this is, yes, I've been bulking this year, but prior to this year, I hadn't done a bulk in a very, very long time. When I first started lifting, I started by doing a cut straight away, and from a cut, going into a bulk, and from a bulk, going into a cut again, and I was in this cycle of cutting and bulking. Now, that doesn't sound inherently bad. However, it wasn't the right thing to do for myself at that time, and I ran into issues with food. I developed some bad habits that took a while to shake. I developed some disordered eating habits um, shortly after my first cut, my first physique show. I'd attached my identity to being very lean, but didn't realize after starving my body for so long, the repercussions of that, which led me to having little to no control over food. And I would eat a lot of food, a lot of highly palatable tasty foods in a short period of time. And there was two occasions where I put my fingers down my throat and made myself get sick. Not ideal. And that could have all been avoided, okay? So I am well aware that these things happen to me and I don't wanna project my experiences onto you, but I want to make you aware of certain traps and certain areas you need to have locked down first so that you could potentially avoid these. Now you might, this might not happen to you at all. You might do a cut or a bulk and you might be fine. And definitely in today's day and age, we have more information for this kind of thing compared to back when I was doing it. Make myself sound like an old man. I suppose I'm kind of getting on. Um, but yeah, I just want to make you aware of certain things so you can go about this in the right way because how you get the result really matters. It's one thing getting a result. I can hand someone a meal plan for 12 weeks and they can get shredded. Great, yippee. What happens after the meal plan? They'll probably lose the result. They'll probably try and go back to eating normal. They won't know what that is. They've been starving themselves for so long and they're gonna run into the same issues I ran into because I followed a meal plan the first time I got shredded and that happened to me. It's a very common occurrence. It happens to a lot of people. So in this video, I'm gonna provide a kind of checklist for you. And if you think you're good on all fronts, then off you go you can do a book. And this is my opinion, of course. You're free to do whatever you want. I don't need to say that, but I'll say it anyways. If there's a few things or even one thing that you're like, hmm, he touched on something, maybe I need to work on that, then that might mean you postponing your book. That might not be what you want to hear. I'm well aware of that, but it might be what you need to hear. Number one, have a strong why. Why? Why? Why do you do it? Because I want to get fucking massive. Do you have a strong why for wanting to do a bulk? Or are you someone who is susceptible to hopping on trends or doing things to please your Instagram followers? Winter is coming. This needs to be something that you really want to do and you have a strong purpose as to why you're doing it. That might sound a bit like, chill up bro, it's not that deep. However, you wanna have a strong reason for why you're doing this because with a bulk, you need to commit and do this for a long period of time. I would say a minimum of six months, but in my opinion, I think it should be a little longer for this to be productive. A bulk is very different to a fat loss phase in, in that like a fat loss phase, six to 12 weeks, you can see some very impressive visual changes. However, when it comes to building muscle, six to 12 weeks ain't shit. Six to 12 months, on the other hand, now we're getting somewhere. 
So you just need to be able, you need to commit and give this time. And in order to do that, you need to have a strong why behind doing this book. We're coming into winter and no doubt you will have heard the words winter arc and being dialed in, being thrown around. No doubt this is having an influence over a lot of people. And now maybe people are thinking they should hop on a book. Hopefully these people, you direct them to watch this video because it may or may not be the best move for them. Um, but yeah, this is, this is having influence over people and you don't want to be someone who's influenced by the time of year or whatever trend is currently all over social media. Otherwise, you will probably, you won't last very long. You know, as soon as some discomfort sets in, which no doubt it will because we're bulking, we're going closer to an extreme, there's gonna be some tough moments during that bulk. I know all about it. Um, no doubt when some discomfort sets in, you will probably prematurely abandon ship before any real progress has been made. If I was susceptible to trends, I would have given up on this bulk a long time ago. I probably would have stopped when it came to summertime because you know summertime we're just supposed to get lean uh, however i didn't give a shit i had a goal in mind and i really wanted to do this so make sure it's something you really want to do have a strong why as to why you want to do this book number two you train hard now you probably saw that coming but this is arguably the most important point i'm going to bring up today if you don't train hard you're just going to get fat if you start eating in a surplus of calories the training stimulus is number one when it comes to building muscle. Unlike a fat loss phase, where calories are the most important thing now, where you just have to be in a negative calorie balance and you will lose weight. When it comes to building muscle, the training stimulus has to be there. You have to have a structured program. You have to be showing up to the gym frequently. You have to be training your ass off, training close to failure with good technique and trying to progress in what you're doing in your lifts over time. There's a bit to it and you need to have that shit locked down otherwise you're going to get fat you can build if, if the training stimulus is strong and you're at maintenance calories you can build muscle in some cases for a lot of beginners if they're in a deficit if they're in a calorie deficit and their training stimulus is strong they can build muscle so that tells you that first and foremost the training stimulus is number one now that's not to say being in a calorie surplus isn't important for building muscle it absolutely is um, if you have the training stimulus down and you pair that with a calorie surplus, now you're putting your body in an ideal environment to build muscle because the body is getting the signal to build muscle and then there's an excess of resources there in terms of calories after your body is provided, use the calories for everything it needs to stay alive and function, and do all the processes that go on within the human body. Once all that is covered and there's excess calories there, it's like, okay, signal to build muscle, we have the resources, let's build some more muscle. Plus, this is important because if you want to do a cut, you don't want to lose your muscle. And if you're training like, it's Brittany, bitch. You will end up losing your muscle on a cut. People think it's because they're in a calorie deficit that they automatically lose muscle. No, you shouldn't. If you're in not as a severe calorie deficit, a small calorie deficit, and you're training hard, and you're recovering, getting good sleep, then you should retain most, if not all of your muscle gain. And why people lose a lot of muscle on a cut is because the training stimulus is weak. And I can attest to that because I let that happen to me some years ago. So that tells you regardless of cutting or bulking, you need to be training hard. And when I say training hard, that involves training close to failure. What you might need to do is to start actually taking some sets to failure to see what close to failure actually looks like. Now you need to be smart with this. I wouldn't advise doing this with compound movements such as the squat or deadlift, maybe the bench press as well, unless you have a spotter. But for other movements where it's safe to do so, start taking sets to failure for a period of time just to see, um, just to see what failure actually feels like and see how close you are to failure. Because a lot of people's perception of what close to failure is, is off. I know this from being a trainer and asking people how many reps left, they want to give up sooner um, than what they're actually capable of. So make sure you know what training close to failure feels like. An indicator that you're training close to failure is your body language, your facial expressions. Is there some involuntary grunting or faces being pulled? I know when I lift, it does not look pretty. And another big one is your rep speed. So 
at the start of, let's say we're pressing at the start of the set, your rep, your contractions from the bottom might look like this, and towards the end, they should probably look like this. This rep speed going super slow is an indicator that you are very close to failure. So bear those things in mind. If the rep speed is the same at the end compared to what it was at the start, it's too easy. You're not training close to failure. As well as training close to failure, we have to be trying to progress in our lifts over time. That means you shouldn't be going into the gym trying to just chase a pump and switching up your workouts. You should be following a structured plan and aiming to progress in your lifts over time. There's a bit too training hard. It's difficult and it should be. We have to give our body a reason to change. So be honest with yourself here. Do you train hard frequently? Because it can't just be a once off. Oh, I remember this session I really pushed. It has to be frequent. You have to be doing this on a weekly basis, almost session to session, session to session basis. If you're doing that, great. If not, you may need to address this before trying to increase the calories. And like I said, if you address this, while your calories are in and around maintenance, you'll grow muscle. Number three, you have been at maintenance calories for a decent period of time. Bulking and cutting, both extremes. But even more so, there are means to an end. You can't stay bulking or cutting forever. It's just not realistic, it's not gonna happen. Where you will spend most of your time is at maintenance calories. I wish I had known about maintenance calories when I first started lifting. Yes, I'm doing a bulk now, but before this bulk, I had been in maintenance for the last six years. Creating structure, building really good habits, following a training plan, enjoying it, enjoying the natural high of pushing myself really hard in my lifts and cultivating a very good relationship with food, removing any of the bullshit that was there previously. If you do that, you may even decide you don't even need to do a book because you might get all the results you want from doing that. Number four, you want to be a healthy body fat percentage. What that percentage is, is going to be different for everybody. I can't give you a figure. But obviously you don't want to be overweight but also you don't want to be too lean now that might sound counterintuitive you might be like if someone is very is too lean or very skinny shouldn't they bulk yes but i'm more so coming from the place of let's say someone has just done a photo shoot or they've done a physique competition the goal shouldn't be to hop into a bulk straight after that your body needs time to recover and how it's going to do that is by gaining some body fat back in a relatively short period of time, but then just maintaining that weight for let's say a period of four to six months and staying there and just letting your body recover, let your hormones fully reset and get back to a healthy place um, before deciding to do a book. Five, you want to have good habits already in place. This is similar to point three on maintenance calories, but you should have good habits and structure already in place. It's not like you're just gonna go straight into a bulk and now automatically you're gonna start doing all these things. Start doing these things before you decide to do a bulk and then not too much will change. Like really, what am I doing What am I doing this year that's different to last year? Nothing, except for the fact that I'm eating more food. I, was, I already had these habits in place. You don't want to change things too much too soon because if you're uprooting your lifestyle in a very short space of time, it can be too much for change and people tend to not last very long when that happens. And I've seen this from experience with myself and a lot of clients I've trained over the past eight years. Guys, that is it for the video. That is your checklist. Um, like I said, you can do, you can choose to do a bulk straight away, but in my opinion, it's a good idea for you to have these areas covered first if you want your bulk to be productive. This is probably not gonna be um one of my best videos is probably not going to be a favorite of a lot of people but i'm hoping a few individuals who watch this that it has maybe postponed the bulk for you because you decided that there is areas you need to work on and address first and that will hopefully save you from running into a lot of the issues that i ran into when i was younger you can then bulk and go hard and lift fucking crazy weights and build a lot of muscle I want that. I want that for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.